Hi everyone, Josie here, Life at 50 and Beyond. Thanks for joining me here on my channel where you will find mostly affordable, practical, and easy DIYs. Today, I have a compilation video of different ways on how you can organize K-cups or coffee pods, even tea bags, as well as cocoa sachets. If you love to drink hot beverages, especially during this time, I hope you'll find some inspiration. Let's get started! For the first DIY, I will be making a two-tier K-cup basket. I will be using this rectangular gold wire basket that I sell at Dollar Tree and this two deeper but smaller rectangular or squarish basket that I also sell at Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to be connecting all three of them using zip ties. I've chosen this black heavy-duty zip ties because my purpose for this organizer is a multi-purpose one, not just for K-cups when I originally made this early this year. This one is a perfect organizer for fruits, even potatoes, and this one can stand up or even hang up on the wall. And I will show you some photos of how it turned out. So this time, I'm going to be making it or using it to organize my K cups. Again, you can make this as a freestanding or hang it on the wall. I'm using three zip ties towards the center or middle part of the top tier because this one doesn't have a support. Unlike the one below, I only use two zip ties because it has the support of that frame, the bottom part of the big rectangular basket. And then I'm just cutting or trimming off the excess zip ties. And this DIY is done. If you want to put heavier items, feel free to use or reinforce with hot glue or E6000 on those connections. But because I used the bigger, bulkier zip ties, I didn't have to. So this is the finished project. And this is what it looks like when it is freestanding. And I will be putting some insert photos on how I use it to organize. Freestanding and also hanging on the wall. So I figured I will also paint over this black zip ties. Actually, I was contemplating on spray painting the whole thing in black, but I figured maybe I should paint it in gold as well to blend in because I think the gold wire actually looks good. So I just want to show you first, it is perfect for coffee pods, even tea bags and hot cocoa sachets or packets and it can actually fit, I think, up to 15 or even more K-cups or coffee pods in each basket. But I figured I can use the bottom part for my tea bags as well as cocoa powder or even jars of tea or even my turmeric so that I can also cater to those who are not coffee drinker. But if you love to drink coffee, this is what it looks like this way. So a total of 40 pods you can fit in here. Here I hung it on the wall just using a simple galvanized nail but you can also use picture hooks or command hooks. So this one can fit 20 pods in each of the basket a total of 40 and what's good about that is that you can actually use one of the levels to hold a different flavor than the one on the other basket so if you want to put regular coffee on one and then decaf on the other here we put in two different flavors a morning blend at the bottom basket and on the top is the donut shop blend it's perfect for a big gathering for entertaining and if you do not have enough space on your counter you can hang it on the wall so I just want to take a moment here to thank our sponsor, Vankyo, and they sent me a Vankyo portable video projector for free, and I'm just doing an unboxing and first impression review, and I'll be linking in the description box below the direct link to their site, and this one does screen mirroring and it has Wi-Fi connection capability and a native resolution of 1280 by 720 with a maximum projection size of 200 inches. So I'm just going to be unboxing here. And so here are some plastic 
hooks that you can hang on the wall and that's where you're going to be placing or hanging on those hooks this fabric here so that if you do not have a smooth wall or maybe a plain wall to project to then you can use this so the projector will project to this fabric instead but i will not be using this because we have a white plain wall so it also came with this case here black case which i actually like and the reason why is because you can store it and it is protected because it is cushiony it has some foam to protect it and then it came with a strap or a couple of straps to keep it in place so that's a user manual there that you can use to guide you when you are using the system and there are different connectors here that you can use and this is also the power cord and it has a remote control and the size of this projector is small it's not a huge bulky one and it has a protector here a rubber silicone to cover the lens and this is where you can put your hd mi and av and some other controls here and the power button and then the back play as well as the menu and then here this is where you can connect your vga so if you want to connect with your laptop there's also this usb connector and so on so i'm not going to use those connectors because what i'm going to use it for is mirroring on my daughter's iphone and actually she's the one who's going to be helping me out with this one so the setup is pretty straightforward and you know you have some options here of different languages and you know when we do the mirroring originally there was no signal and then once we found how to do it it got much better okay to avoid any copyright infringement i am using my own video here to show you so we've decided to project to the wall in our living room so we elevated it a little bit with some cushions but uh yeah so that works out well too that's my daughter and yeah so this is one of my tutorials here where i created a glue gun holder or organizer and now she's showing how she's controlling it on her cell phone and you can do landscape or probably the phone view and then she did it again in landscape you can also look at our photo album here if you're entertaining and you want to look at photos not just videos you can do that as well so you can do a slideshow presentation as well during meetings or you can use this the clarity of the text as well as images i think this is a really good quality here so it's perfect for entertaining indoors and outdoors so i want to thank again vankyo for sending me this product i do appreciate it and i give it a two thumbs up for me and then of course another four two for my husband and daughter and link in the description box to the product with some discounts diy number two k cup tower for this diy i'll be using one stainless steel paper towel holder that i got at dollar tree and then four pieces of the matching stainless steel napkin holders this is the tag in case you're wondering it's by cooking concept and then i'll also be using some zip ties so i've chosen white small zip ties so first i'll be connecting two paper towel holders this way with my zip ties i will need to loosely connect them first because the zip ties will just keep them together while i assemble the pieces together so i'll just be putting one zip tie here where you'll see me putting it and then another zip tie on the opposite end and then below them on the other side of the napkin holders i'll be also putting two zip ties in the same positions or place where i placed the other two so again this is just loosely connecting my zip ties in order for me to easily connect the paper towel holder with these two napkin holders 
I'm inserting the paper towel holder in between these two napkin holders like so. And then I am placing one zip tie at the center of the two napkin holders. Again, loosely connecting my zip tie there. I'm doing the same process with the other two napkin holders, loosely connecting them with four zip ties like I did with the first pair, and then inserting the handle of the paper towel holder, and then connecting another zip tie at the center loosely again. I have slided up the top two paper towel holders, and then I am tightening each of the zip tie. And then once I like the height, I'm just leaving about an inch and a half spare of that paper towel holder there so that it'll be my handle. Then I'm going to be connecting more zip ties. Here on this side, I'm crisscrossing my zip ties. As you can see, I'm trying to capture the corner there of one of the napkin holders to the other side or the opposite napkin holder, like so. Sometimes it's easier to just watch what I'm doing because it's really hard for me to interpret it. So I'm just gonna do it again, repeat it here. So diagonally, I am capturing the corner there. That way, my napkin holders will not slide down. It's going to be a little tricky, especially if you have big hands like me. <laughs> but anyway, these zip ties, especially the ones that I put first, kind of help me. They're kind of like my helpers too, and keep the things together or in place. So now I am tightening each of the zip tie again. Notice that at the bottom part, I didn't put a middle zip tie and I'm not even doing the crisscross zip ties as well but you can do that just to make it a little bit more secure but to me I didn't find it necessary so here I just flip it on its side just to tighten the bottom two zip ties I only needed two at the bottom tightening it some more And then when I'm satisfied, I'm also checking if my making sure that the two napkin holders at the top are leveled or aligned and not tilting or unbalanced. And then as you notice here, I'm turning those knots or where you see those bulky connections downwards so that they will not be too exposed or protruding that way it looks a little cleaner and I, later on i'll show you also that i will make this a little bit more cohesive in look and not too exposed so anyway here i am putting the other zip tie to crisscross or make a letter X here of the connection then tightening it again as I turn the bulky part or where the connection is to the bottom part or bottom side so as they are not exposed and here in a little bit of a faster motion I'm doing the same thing on the opposite side You see, that's an X or crisscross connection trapping the corners on opposite sides just to make sure that my napkin holders will not slide down. So here I am making sure they align and tight again before I cut the excess zip ties. Just pull them among them tightly and then cutting the excess zip ties. <laughs> and 
and this is what it looks like. Now I'm using this nail filer so that I can dull the ends of those sharp zip tie cuts that are exposed so that it will not cause any scratches or cuts. And I'm also going to be applying hot glue so that it will be a double protection and also dual purpose so that it will kind of stick and make my connection more secure. And I slide up the other two napkin holders a little higher, maybe two inches higher so that it's elevated. And then I did the same thing of connecting and tightening and cutting the excess zip ties and then filing the edges as well. And like I said, applying hot glue will make it more secure and also those sharp edges will be covered and protected by the hot glue. And here's what it looks like now, the tower. Love it! Now to those of you who do not like to see the zip ties, I found this acrylic paint from Target Dollar Spot for a dollar. So I'm just going to be using one of my artist paint brushes and then I'm just going to be shaking the silver paint. It's two fluid ounces from Target Dollar Spot or Bullseye Playground for just a dollar. And I'll be just applying the silver paint on the zip ties to camouflage them and make them blend better. They may look more silvery in finish than if I leave them white, they will stick out. At least this one will allow the, the zip ties to blend in. Now you may opt to spray paint the zip ties first before you use them. But I figured this one is also a great option. And for just a dollar, I was able to buy that acrylic silver paint. So I applied a couple of coats of that silver paint, drying in between each coat. And then now I'm cleaning the excess paint using cotton buds. And here it is. Now I'm going to be placing my K cups. This one can fit five pieces or five K-cups or coffee pods on each of the compartments. I would say in each of the napkin holders, it can fit a total of 10. So since I have four napkin holders, each with two compartments, I can fit 40 pieces total of K-cups or coffee pods. It can also fit this reusable coffee pods or containers. So for those of you who are more environmentally conscious, you can use this as well. It can fit up to five pieces as well. You'll just need to put four on the U side and then one at the center so it can fit five. So what I'm going to do is add more K-cups on the top so that you will see it when it is all filled with K-cups. Again, if you want to do the reusable K-cups, you can do so as well. But there are other ways to recycle the K-cups, the empty K-cups, and you can use them to germinate seeds or they can also be recycled at the recycling center. So just ask your local recycling centers if they accept K-cups for recycling. And other ideas would be to reuse them as probably organizers. So I'm still thinking on what else I can use them for aside from germinating seeds. Now here I'm showing that I can also put in two more there. And then since I have the same thing in each of the levels, then I could possibly also fit in a total of additional four K cups at the center on each level. So grand total of 48 K cups, not just 40 that I originally thought of. So this is perfect for a big gathering or a big family that loves to drink coffee. Nowadays, you can also buy K cups for chocolates or hot cocoa as well as hot tea. So not just for coffee lovers, but for any other hot drinks as well. DIY number three, multi-purpose K cup stand. 
I will be using two paper towel holders. I am inverting one of my paper towel holders and connecting them with zip ties. And then I'm going to be putting two of these baskets, one on each side, and then tying some zip ties to the paper towel holder, like so. Just making sure that it's tight before you trim the excess. Then for the top, I'm connecting first the baskets before I connect them on the top of my holder or my stand. This way, I'm sure that they stay lined up. And then I'm going to go ahead and tie my zip ties. just showing here that I'm kind of doing some adjustments to make sure that they're straight and then off camera I had to add four more zip ties at the edge or at the end at the center of these two baskets so that they connect and then I'm also using my Lazy Susan here so here's the setup of my hot drink station I put some hot tea creamer as well as some instant coffee sachets and then I also have some cups here and I use the shower rings that I got at Dollar Tree to hang them and then I also have my K cups so this is something that you can use on a day-to-day -day basis these containers will hold the sugar as well as creamer and look these are the steers from Dollar Tree as well so if you want to entertain, you probably wouldn't want to put the cups there hanging, maybe just for display, but you can just serve your coffee with just paper cups. DIY number four, K-Cup Caddy. Using six wooden signs, I'm gonna be connecting three together twice. So three and three, because this is gonna be two levels and this is going to be a caddy. I'm gonna be using a combination of hot glue with either E6000 or Fix All as well. And I'm just gonna be lining them up together. I'm using this Fix All. You can buy this at Dollar Tree at the hardware section. Make sure that you have proper air ventilation because this one really is odorous and you may get dizzy if you're sensitive. So I just want to make sure I give you some caution there. So after I apply a generous amount of fix all, I'm also putting some generous amount of hot glue to reinforce my connections. And then I'm pressing again with my fingers and then using some clips, binder clips, to adhere them better. So I'm just going to be doing the same thing on the side here. And I'm just going to do this in fast motion and then leave you with some music while I do the other set as well. After I let them dry overnight, this is how they turned out. And I have a three compartment shell. So this is gonna be two tier, and I'm gonna be using, like I said earlier, as my support, this two paddle board shaped cutting boards or the plastic cutting boards that they sell at Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna be putting them on each side. Here, combination again using Fix All, I am going to be applying to the side and then I'm going to be applying also my hot glue. So 
So I placed the paddle board, cutting board, on top of my workspace so that I can see the bottom lining up to my wooden signs or my shelf. And I'm just making sure that I line them up properly and the bottom edge of the cutting board aligns to the bottom of my shelf. So I'm pressing again with my fingers making sure that it is secure and at this point because of the hot glue that dries fast it's going to be a little hard to move at this point already so that's why I made sure that it already lined up. Next, I am going to be assessing or eyeballing where I'm gonna be placing the top tier so that I have enough clearance also, not just at the bottom tier, but also where I'm gonna be putting my handle. So I just wanna make sure I have enough clearance on both tiers or both trays. So here, I'm just repeating the steps I've done on the other one, combining applying my fix all as well as my hot glue then pressing with my fingers to make sure that the tray adheres to the plastic cutting board and then while it's in this position i am applying the fix all as well as my hot glue on both of the shelves or trays and then i'm going to be placing on top the plastic cutting board and making sure that that board lines up to the board on the opposite side. Using my fingers again to press to make sure that the glue adheres and then I'm just trying to see if it's leveled and then I'm drying it overnight on its side not standing up like this. Then after overnight of drying, I am going to be painting it and I have this Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen. I got this at Amazon and I am going to be linking it in the description box below in case you're interested. I love this color a lot and it matches the color of the cutting board. Although I'm going to be applying some of it to the cutting board just to make it a little bit more even. So I am just going to be applying a couple of coats of paint onto this wooden signs or my trays slash shelves. And here it is after I applied a couple of coats of paint and I'll probably do a little bit of touch up later if I see that there are some areas but I think it looks okay already as is. Then I'm going to be putting in my handle. I used the rolling pin that I got at Dollar Tree. I got to use what I have, but you can also use the handle of the toilet plunger that they sell at Dollar Tree. As a matter of fact, I've used that already on some of my projects as well. But since this rolling pin is a little shorter than the width of my caddy, I have improvised it by adding on each side some cardboard cutouts. So that's something that I cut out from a shipping box, uh, the one that's thick. Don't use thin cardboard or else it won't hold it. So this time I'm going to be using my E6000 and then I'm applying my E6000 on each side of my rolling pin, my extended an improvised rolling pin that is and then I'm also going to be applying hot glue for faster bonding but the more stable bond will be provided by the E6000 so that's why you have to combine the E6000 with the hot glue so that it dries fast with the hot glue and then binds better with the E6000 so put as much glue or be generous with your glue if you are going to do this because again this is going to be the handle and it will carry the weight not only of the caddy but the contents in it. Another option would be to use a sort of a screw that can fit through and it will be more durable than using glue but epoxy should be durable as well. It's kind of like liquid nails and here you can see me also trying to reinforce more through the hole where the perimeter or the ends are and yeah that should be covering it well and here also on the opposite side here. 
I am doing this to the edges and not on the one that doesn't connect to anything. So it's the connection that I am reinforcing. Then I am pressing both ends together with my fingers and then I am drying this again overnight. I am going to be painting my handle and to give a little bit of contrast, I am going to be using this Waverly paint or chalk paint. It is the elephant color. Originally, I was going to leave it unfinished because I like the natural look of the rolling pin, but I decided to paint it in gray or this elephant finish so that I can use this as a contrast. And since I'm going to be putting the buffalo checks, it will blend better. And here it is after a coat of paint and I'm just gonna show you again that's the elephant gray by Waverly here I am just gonna be tracing with my fingers where I'm gonna be placing this wrapping paper and I am just gonna be kind of pressing it more like a crude method that I have used so that I can just trace the indentation there the border from the cutting board and then just using my nails to mark. You can use any sharp object but I feel that the fingers would be better so that you can really feel where it is. And then I'm just going to use a pair of scissors to cut. Then I'm going to be using my paintbrush and I will be applying this Mod Podge. And that's how I'm going to be attaching this paper onto my cutting board. I'm just applying a generous amount here of Mod Podge then just making sure that when I attach my paper there's not a lot of air bubbles and then I am applying Mod Podge again on top of it. To camouflage the ends of my handle I am applying this nautical rope to finish it off. That will cover any imperfection on those edges and to cover the holes I'm also winding the piece of this nautical rope and then just to cover it up kind of like creating a button to cover it kind of like the other one that I did three years ago that's how I finished it off so I'm attaching it and repeating the same style or steps on the opposite side and here it is I love how this one turned out and it has three compartments on each level so a total of six compartments and I'm going to show you I am going to be using this to organize my K-Cups. So I have this decaf K-Cups that I am organizing in each row it can fit up to six pieces of this K-Cups and so for each tier I have 18 a total of 36 and I love this style because it goes with my style so here I'll just be lining up all of our tea bags of different flavors so it's up to you if you want to use it this way aside from k-cups so I kept the k-cups below on the bottom tier and then the tea bags on the top tier so I hope you enjoyed this video everyone. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please share with anyone who may be in need of a K-Cup or hot beverage organizer. And let me know in the comment section down below which one is your favorite. Also, if you're new to my channel, welcome. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. And don't forget to click that notification bell icon so that you will not miss any of my new uploads. I do a lot of DIYs and they're mostly affordable, practical, and easy to make using thrifted items or dollar store items like you've seen today. I would also like to invite you to follow me on all my other social media accounts shown on display on the screen right now. Have a great day everyone and I'll talk to you again on my next video. Take care and God bless. Bye bye!